Hello and welcome to That's Why We Have Hot Dogs in the Freezer and this episode we're calling it Staycation because that's what we're doing. This is my wife Diane, I'm Tom, as you probably already know, and we have been married since October 4th, 2008. And I originally married her, I used to say I originally married her, because she knew the way to the Outer Banks. In other words, she used to do all the driving. I can take that for you, hon. So, little did I know, I could have probably replaced her with a GPS. But anyway, well, when we would drive to the Outer Banks, it's about a six and a half hour drive from where we live. The trip back was worse than the trip down. I like to collect cookbooks. So while we were on vacation, wherever we would go, I would buy cookbooks and then on the way back to keep her awake and so we wouldn't have to hit so many rest stops, I would read to her from the cookbooks. So I have a couple of the cookbooks here and I, some of these are really interesting. I have a whole collection of cookbooks, but this first one here is from the Round Hill United Methodist Church in Winchester, Virginia. This is an old one. I like old ones because they have bookmarks, meaning somebody else has already gone through it and used the book. If they didn't use it, it's just going to sit there and look like it's brand new, and that's not a good book. So let's look at one of these things that are marked. Ah, broccoli cheese casserole. Here we go. And this is how I would read to her. Two packages of frozen broccoli, one cup of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one cup of grated cheese, one tablespoon of melted butter or margarine, two cups of cooked chicken, cooked chicken, two cans cream of chicken soup, undiluted, one teaspoon of curry powder. We'll get into that controversy in a later episode. And three quarter cups of breadcrumbs. Cook your broccoli until tender. Mix all ingredients except the broccoli and chicken. Arrange chicken and broccoli in a large casserole dish. Pour over mixed ingredients and bake 25 to 30 minutes at 350 degrees. This is from Maxine Voris. So I was going to say there's no chicken, but there is. There's two cups of cooked chicken in there. One of the neat things about this one is this one. Yes, this is the one I opened it up when I bought it. And at the front, it has corrections for cookbook. And as luck would have it, there is a correction on page 33. I just read broccoli chicken casserole from page 32, but on page 33 is broccoli chicken casserole. And this is not unusual to find more than one recipe for the same dish in one of these cookbooks. Because they didn't want to offend anybody, they would go ahead and put the whole recipe for whoever put it in. So in this one, it's broccoli dash chicken casserole by Bonnie Pitzer. And the note here says to add one quarter cup of margarine to her recipe. Now her recipe, I won't go through the instructions, but her ingredients read like this. Two 10 ounce packages of broccoli. You remember the other recipe didn't say what size package of broccoli. Two to three cups of cooked chicken diced. You can add more chicken to her. Two or three cups. Two cans cream of mushroom soup. It doesn't say undiluted. One cup of mayonnaise. Half a teaspoon of that curry powder again. One cup of Pepperidge Farm seasoned stuffing mix. One teaspoon of lemon juice and four ounces of shredded cheddar cheese. As, you look, as I look through here, I see that there is a broccoli turkey casserole, which seems to have a lot more ingredients. 
Um, oh, one of my favorites. Green bean casserole. Two boxes. Frozen. French style green beans. Ooh la la. Yeah. French style. Mamzelle French. Mm -hmm. Two cans of Campbell's cheddar cheese soup. I don't even know if they make cheddar cheese soup anymore. And one can of sliced mushrooms. Cook green beans as directed on the box. Put beans in a buttered casserole dish. Spread soup over beans. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. What do you do with the sliced mushrooms? It doesn't say. Snack on those while you're putting cooking the beans, I guess. But that was Anne Marie Haynes. They put that one in there. And the, the neat thing about these, it, they have a company that does them. So that inside you think, see things like uh, appetizers and uh, appetizers are those treats that can be served either at the start of a meal or at a reception or open house. Listed below are quick appetizers that can be served anytime with crackers, just in case they forgot to put appetizer recipes in here. Caviar flavored with onion juice. Well, hey, I'm sure that the folks at the Round Hill United Methodist Church can lay their hands on some caviar and onion juice. Cream cheese with chopped chutney and dash of that stupid curry powder again. Yeah. Lobster tail moistened with lemon juice. The folks at the Round Hill United Methodist Church can lay their hands on lobster tail, too. So anyway, that's that one. Now, one time, we went to Amish country. This was interesting. I went and bought the Amish cookbook. Over 1,000 recipes in the Amish cookbook. Favorite recipes collected and received by Al Alvin and Sally Lapp. Well, I started looking through here, and I don't know. I know the Amish have abandoned all modern conveniences and so forth, but they didn't do that in their recipes, and they really should probably have a dental plan. I just opened the book up to a random spot. Page 212, Desserts. Desserts is two-thirds of the book, by the way. Even if it's not desserts, it's... Okay, there's a desserts, and then there's a cookies section. And there's a candy section. Yeah. And a cakes and icings section. Cakes and, I cakes and icings. Breads, donuts, and rolls. So anyway, 212. Homemade Dream Whip. Remember Dream Whip? Half cup of hot water blended with one tablespoon of gelatin. Add two egg yolks. Set in refrigerator to set. This can be made. How do you run a refrigerator in an Amish house? They don't have electricity. No, never mind that. Set in refrigerator to set. This can be made in advance. When ready to use, Beat two egg whites very stiff and add one tea vanilla. Is that teaspoon or tablespoon? It's tea dot. And a half a cup of raw sugar or honey. If you use honey, only use a third of a cup. Beat gelatin until stiff and smooth. Add to egg whites and fold by hand. Will last for hours at room temperature. May also be frozen for ice cream in that refrigerator that yeah. we're not sure how it keeps it running. Anyway, uh, let's just, oh. So here's a section for meat and vegetable casseroles. I'll just go, oh. One of my favorites right here as soon as I hit it. Tater tot casserole. Remember this? This is the Amish cookbook. Tater tot casserole. Two bags of tater tots. You getting turned on yet? Yeah. Two bags of tater tots. Doesn't say what size bags. Yeah. Hamburger. Doesn't say how much hamburger. Mixed vegetables. Because it's healthier. 
Doesn't say how much, but it doesn't say what size or how much on the mixed vegetables. One can cream of mushroom soup. One can cream of chicken soup. Brown the hamburger. Then mix the soups, vegetables, and meat together. Put a bag of tater tots in bottom of pan or roaster. Spread mixture over tots. Then put other bag on top. Put cheese on top. Bake till very bubbly. Now, I didn't see any mention of cheese in the, in the, in the recipe, but okay. And we didn't see what vegetables. No, it just says mixed vegetables. It yeah. didn't say if it was yeah. frozen mixed right. vegetables, a can of mixed vegetables. It doesn't say. Yeah. Zucchini pizza. I hope you saw my my cauliflower pizza. Well, I don't think this is the same thing. Zucchini pizza. I'm going to do it. The, the, when she started to really doze off as she was driving, yeah. I would read it a little differently. So here we go with that one. Four cups of shredded zucchini. <laughs> Half a cup of oil. Yeah. Three eggs. <laughs> One tea of oregano. Yeah. Still don't know if it's a teaspoon or a tablespoon. One <laughs> cup of bisquick. <laughs> Half a cup of chopped onions. And two tea of parsley. Bits Bake. Tablespoon. Do you think? Yeah. Not teaspoon of parsley? No. That's a lot of parsley. TSP, I think, was teaspoon. Well, not in this. It's just a tea. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. Then cover with pizza sauce. I didn't see any mention of pizza sauce in the recipe. And sprinkle cheese, which is not listed. And bake it for 10 more minutes. So, let, let's read this again. I read the ingredients. Real quick. Four cups of shredded zucchini, half a cup of oil, three eggs, one tea oregano, one cup of bisquick, half a cup of chopped onions, and two tea parsley. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. Bake what? Then cover with pizza sauce and sprinkle cheese on top. Bake 10 more minutes. This is from Fanny S. Miller from Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania. I've been to Bird in Hand. It's right outside of Intercourse which we won't get into right now. But anyway, that's the this one kept her awake for quite a while yeah. coming back from Lancaster because yeah, this is an interesting one. To be honest, I have not cooked anything out of this book because a lot of it I don't know. <laughs> There's things like knee patches, Clark bars. There's instructions for Clark bars, but right above it, there's a little thing that says, don't expect smooth sailing when you're kicking up a storm. Words to live by. There's a listing here for Little Debbie cookies. Uh, maple nut drops. Sour cream molasses cookies. Grandma's drop cookies. So anyway, that's the Amish cookbook. We're almost out of time. I'm trying to keep this video short. Yeah. When I was younger, I was into cooking then too, and I would have younger people than me. Now, when I say younger, I was, I think I was in my 20s, 30s. I was probably in my 30s because I had younger guys, 18, 20 years old, asking me what they should do. And I told them to go out and buy a copy of The Joy of Cooking. Now, this comes out every year, and they change it every year. What's interesting, though, is if you can get the older editions, this one was mine from a few years ago. The eighth printing was 1977. These mark history, at least as far as food goes. I marked a recipe in here. And this, you won't find this section in the newer version of The Joy of Cooking because it's on large game. And in particular, bear. So if you're ever wondering about bear, 
Remove all fat from bear meat as it turns rancid very quickly, but if rendered at once, it's prized for cooking. If marinated and refrigerated at least 24 hours in an oil-based marinade, all bear, even black bear, is edible. Although mature bear is apt to be too tough to be enjoyable. Cook after marination as for any recipe for beef pot roast or stew. What's cooking? Bear cub will need about a two and a half hours cooking. For an older animal, allow three and a half to four hours. Bear, like pork, can carry trichinosis, so be sure the bear meat is always well cooked through. So what have we learned? Bear in a crock pot, if you've got a big enough crock pot. Yeah. In fact, that bear in the crock pot yeah. would be unbearable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, that was another episode of That's Why We Have Hot Dogs in the Freezer. And that was the episode we are calling Staycation. Staycation. Yeah. This is Tom. This is Diane. If you like this video, please like, and subscribe, and click on my little face. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it over there or put it over there, but you'll see it. And like I always say at the end of my videos, what do I say? You said, if you like it, uh, press the little bell. And yes, yes press, press the little bell as a reminder so next time I do decide to be silly, yeah. you'll see it. So anyway... Subscribe to my channel. Bye. We'll see you.